Greetings once again radio people and welcome back to Lamco Labs deep in the bowels of LAM communications. Today I'd like to show you how to use the Kenwood TS590 SG with a standard USB cable and the WSJTX software suite to run JT65 and JT9 digital modes. These are both excellent modes for use with low power and compromised antennas. The Kenwood TS590 SG is well suited to this software as you can set a very wide RX bandwidth allowing you to receive both modes at the same time. Apologies for the way I sound, but you should understand that there is much snot in abundance. The video will be in a number of parts. In part one we'll show you how to cover the, the radio for use with the USB cable. In part two we'll talk about the radio connection to the PC and how to set that up. Part three we'll look at time synchronization, which is essential for these modes. And then finally in part four We'll show you how to configure the radio and the WSJT software application to get up and running. So let's get started with part one and look at the radio configuration. So here in part one we need to set a few menu items on the TS590SG so that we can run the WSJTX software. On the screen you can now see the menu items that are important for this mode and the values they're set to are contained in the third column headed value. So let's discuss them. Menu 28 lets us use the shift and width controls on the radio to separately set the high and low cut points in the receive bandpass filter. More on that later when we set up the WSJTX software. Menu 31 and 32 set the lower and upper cut values for the transmit audio filter. These are the default values but it's important to check that they're set correctly. Menu 36 and 37 switch off the transmit and receive equalizers, as we don't want them for this exercise. Item 68 sets the speed for the USB to PC communications. 69 tells the radio to take audio from the USB line for data communications. And finally, 70 and 72 set the input and output volume for the USB audio devices. I have mine set to the lowest setting, so if you find later that you don't have a high enough audio level on receive or transmit, you could increase these values. So let's now move on to part 2 and set up the radio to PC connection. So before we connect the TS590SG to the PC using a standard USB cable, we need to install two pieces of software from the Kenwood website. The first is this virtual COM port driver you can see here, and the second is the USB audio controller. You should be able to find this page from the Kenwood website just by using a simple search. You should install these two pieces of software before connecting the radio to the PC. But once you've installed the two, the two items of software, go ahead and connect the USB cable from the 590 to the PC, and then two devices should install automatically. If you then look in Device Manager, you should find you've got an extra COM port added underneath the section here called Ports. Uh, I've got an awful lot within my computer, but you should have just one or two. And secondly, within the sound, video and game controllers, you should have a new audio device, which is probably going to be called something like Audio Codec. If you actually go into the Sound Device Manager and look under the Playback tab, you will find that I've actually named mine TS590 USB Audio 2 Radio, which is this one here. If you find the audio codec that's installed and double-click it, you can actually give it a new name here. Now, because I've got so many devices on my computer, I tend to name them after the radio to make it easier to find. But my device is a TS590 USB Audio 2 Radio, and in here we've got TS590 USB Audio from Radio. So those are the two audio devices we're going to use later, and also we're going to use the COM port that's been installed and in my example that happens to be COM14. So let's move on now and look at part 3 where we'll look at time synchronization which is really essential for these WSJT modes. Now if you've ever listened to JT65 or any other WSJT mode on the air you may have noticed that all the signals you can hear start transmitting at exactly the same moment in time. This is because one of the key facts to these excellent modes is that the decoding software knows exactly what should be transmitted at any given moment in time, and because of that it's essential that your PC clock is very accurate. The built-in time synchronization within Windows is not considered to be good enough for this task, and most people using these modes will be using a separate time synchronization package. 
There are a number of different packages available, but I've used Dimension 4 with great success on Windows 7. This is the main screen on the internet for this package, and you can download it from the website here. The package itself is actually authored by a company called Thinking Man Software. Once downloaded and installed, the main screen looks like this. From the list of servers in this box here, you should select something that's geographically local to you, and once you've done that, the software will then automatically set your PC clock, and then adjust it and update the clock every 30 minutes as necessary. Really, once this is installed and running, you really don't need to worry about it, but it's very, very important to get the time accuracy for these WSJT modes. So let's move on to the next part. So before we move on to the actual software package itself, there's a couple of things we need to set up on the radio. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the radio is in upper sideband mode. We're going to use upper sideband and not upper sideband data mode. And the prime reason for that is because we want the receive bandwidth to be fairly wide. And I'm going to adjust the receive low cut point down to zero and I'm going to move the high cut point up to 3.4 kilohertz. Now I haven't found a way to set the bandwidth that wide in data mode, so if anybody knows how to do that, please let me know. We're going to make sure that we take the processor off, we don't want the speech processor on, and we're going to make sure our power is at a reasonably low level. Mine's currently set at 25 watts. The other thing that you may want to play with with WSJT mode is the AGC settings. Mine's currently set to fast, and I think the time constant is set at a value of 9 but you may want to experiment with that. Some people run with AGC off which you can do by holding this button here. You'll see it now says AGC off on the screen now. But I'm going to leave mine with AGC in fast but that's something that you may want to take a look at. But now we've set the radio correctly we'll move on to the software package itself. WSJTX is one of a number of software packages that Joe Taylor K1JT has created for the amateur community. All hail Joe Taylor! Here you can see the home page of the WSJT suite, and today we're going to look at the WSJTX software. The software is updated regularly, and from this page here you can find the latest version. Once you've downloaded and installed it, you can run the software, and the first thing you'll probably notice is that there are two separate screens. One screen is a wide graph which shows you the audio spectrum, and the other screen is the main control screen. The main control screen looks like this. We need to do a few things to set up some parameters to get this ready. So if you go to File, Settings, within the General tab we need to make sure the call sign is your call sign and the grid square is your grid. And in the Radio tab we need to select the Kenwood TS590SG. We need to select the serial port that we installed earlier. Now in my example that's COM14 but yours is likely to be different. We need to select the board rate. Now one of the menu items we set earlier was the board rate for communications down the USB line. So we set that to 57.6. 8 data bits, 1 stop bit and hardware handshaking is necessary for the TS590SG. The PTT method is CAT which is going to use the same COM port that we've selected over here for CAT control to key the radio into transmit. It's important that we select the transmit audio source as the rear or the data connector. The mode we're running in is USB. As I explained earlier, we're not running in data mode, we're running in USB mode. And split operation, which we'll show you in a second, is going to be controlled by the rig. Once you've set those things, there are a few things you can do. You can test the cat by clicking on this button. The fact that that's gone green tells me that that communication is working correctly. And you can also click this button here to test the PTT. And hopefully when you press that button there and this turns red, your radio also goes into transmit. So now that we've set up the application correctly and we've got cat control communications working between the radio and the application, we can now see that the radio has automatically gone into split mode. When I click now on the different parts of the waterfall, you will see that the transmit frequency, which is the VFOB frequency, adjusts as I click in different parts of the waterfall. You need to make sure that that's working correctly before you go any further. So the next thing we want to do now we've got the radio tab set up correctly is move on to the audio tab and then we only, the last thing we have to do here is set the input and output devices correctly. I'm sure you'll remember that I renamed mine to TS590 USB audio from radio and audio to radio so I could find them easily. So these are the two devices that we need and you need to select them. You'll have by far fewer than I've got here. And once that's set, we can click OK here. 
Now we should now have audio coming into the application and what we need to do on the, to set the receive audio correctly we need to adjust this slider here so that it sits at around 30 dB on this scale here. Somewhere between 30 and 35 dB will be just fine. On the transmit side what we need to do is to go into the um, audio device manager find the audio to radio device that we've selected earlier in the tab and we can hit this tune button here and now that puts the radio into transmit and with the carrier being transmitted and what I want you to do is to adjust the level using the slider so that you've got the power we selected out and in my case that was 25 watts but it's really important that you adjust this to the level where you've got zero ALC I'm going to say that again because that's how important it is we need to adjust the volume output to the radio so that we've got the power output but we've got zero ALC operating on the rig. Once you've done that you should be pretty much ready to go with JT65, JT9 and WSJTX. In the waterfall screen that I'll move into play here what you need to understand is that the signals from this blue line here at 2.5k audio to the left of this all of these signals should be JT65 signals JT9 signals should appear to the right so between 2.5 and about 3.4k or thereabouts is where you'll find JT9 that's actually a JT9 signal from a previous period there doesn't appear to be much in this period happening at the moment the other thing to note is that the you can set up the, uh, the the application to receive both JT65 and JT9. JT65 decodes are, star are depicted by this hash here. JT9 decodes are depicted by this ampersand uh, at sign here. Now, to transmit, you need to toggle between JT65 and JT9. You do that by toggling in here. Now, clearly, if you were transmitting JT9, you want to be somewhere above 2.5k audio, and if you're transmitting JT65, you want to be somewhere below 2.5k audio. There's a very, very good manual on Joe's site here on the WSJTX page. Here, there's a WSJTX user guide. I recommend you download that and, and have a read of it, but I hope you have a bit of fun with WSJTX. I find it a fabulous piece of software.